Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, June 27th. This is Gina McGuire. Over the next couple of days, we will continue to see impacts to fire potential from our gusty winds and low relative humidity, generally today across the eastern half of Utah and the Arizona Strip. However, winds today will be slightly weaker than what we saw yesterday, but still west to northwest winds gusting between 25 and 30 or even 35 miles per hour with low relative humidity. We will also continue to see some breezy winds across southern Idaho, but relative humidity will be a little bit higher. However, we do have quite a bit of fire activity up in there, so it is something to note. As we move into Wednesday and a secondary cold front drops south, our winds will increase over the southern half to two-thirds of Utah and the Arizona Strip, with west to northwest winds gusting between 35 and 40 miles per hour, or even higher, with relative humidity below 10%. Also, winds will be increasing across northeast Nevada into southern Idaho, which is where we've had plenty of fire activity over the last 24 hours. Wind gusts in this area also could gust above 30 or 35 miles per hour with low relative humidity. Therefore, again, something to note, especially as we move into Wednesday. Winds will be decreasing on Thursday, and although we will see some lightning activity today across parts of Idaho into Wyoming and possibly northern Utah, we'll be more isolated than what we saw yesterday, and relative humidity will be a little bit higher up in those areas. Also, Hain 6 is forecast for central and southern Utah today and tomorrow, which will increase the potential for plume-dominated fire activity in those areas. Over the last 24 hours, we've seen a good amount of lightning across southern Idaho into northeast Nevada, with more isolated activity into northern and northeast Utah and Wyoming, and we've only had light amounts of rainfall reported. However, some of these cells across Idaho did likely see some brief heavier rainfall. However, amounts generally ranged between a few hundredths to about five hundredths of an inch of reported precipitation. Therefore, they were on the drier side and moving very quickly, producing gusty outflow winds above 55 or 60 miles per hour. Great Basin fire activity has really increased across southern Idaho and northeast Nevada, with numerous large fires ongoing in those areas. Also, initial attack increased over the rest of southern Idaho into parts of Utah. Over the last seven days, dry conditions have continued across much of Nevada and Idaho. This does not include any precipitation we saw with thunderstorms yesterday, but again, that precipitation was very spotty across Idaho and Nevada. In Utah, over the last seven days, any precipitation has really been associated with thunderstorm activity. Over the last 30 days, we've had well below normal precipitation across much of the Great Basin, and no precipitation over the southern half of Nevada into far southwest Utah, which is where we have the Bryan Head fire. How this has retranslated into our current fuel conditions, ERCs are above the 90th or 97th percentile over the southern half of the Great Basin and a little bit lower further north. However, again, ERCs do not include really the grass fuel moisture, which has been driving much of the fire activity over the northern half of the Great Basin. The grass fuels are better represented by the 10-hour fuel moisture, which is very low across all areas. Also, our fuel loading, our fine fuel loading over western and northern Nevada into northern Utah and southern Idaho has been well above normal this year. Further south, we don't have near the fine fuel loading. However, larger fires have been driven by our larger fuels. Looking at our satellite loop from today, you can see a trough of low pressure now moving eastward across the Great Basin, which has still been producing some thunderstorms which continue during the overnight and early morning hours across the northern portion of the basin. We will continue to see some lightning activity again today across Idaho, far northern Utah, and Wyoming, which will also be a mix of wet and dry. Now looking at the weather pattern for later today, as that trough of low pressure swings eastward, we will continue to see some lightning activity with some very light showers across Idaho, Wyoming, into far northern Utah today, with still dry and breezy conditions over the southern portion of the basin, which is where we continue to see those high risk for windy conditions and low relative humidity. Again, further north, we will likely see some new initial attack across parts of eastern Idaho into Wyoming and northern Utah, but these are areas where the fuels haven't quite completely cured out, but we will continue to monitor that. Relative humidity, again, will remain below 5 or 10 percent over the southern half of the basin and a little bit higher further north, and again, those wind gusts will mainly be across the eastern side of the Great Basin, but also across southern Idaho, where we do have obviously some large fire activity, we will see northwest wind gusts between 25 and 30 miles per hour. However, relative humidity will be a little bit higher. As we move into Wednesday, this trough swings eastward and we have another cold front dropping south, which will enhance the winds over southern and eastern Utah and still continue with some isolated lightning and shower activity up across eastern Idaho into Wyoming. So again, we are high risking those gusty winds and dry conditions over southern 
and eastern Utah into the Arizona Strip on Wednesday. Relative humidity again below 10% really across the southern areas of the Great Basin and you can see the wind field on the right showing those winds increasing with gusts above 35 or 40 miles per hour expected on Wednesday. Again across southern Idaho despite slightly higher relative humidity we will continue to see breezy northwest winds. By Thursday, the ridge of high pressure starts to build along the west coast with decreasing winds over the eastern side of the Great Basin. Therefore, we do not have any high risk for Thursday, but still expect some moderate northwest winds to continue across Idaho and Utah. Again, they will be weaker than what we'll see today and Wednesday. Relative humidity still remaining quite low across the southern half to two-thirds of the Great Basin, again with those breezy northwest winds. Overall forecast amounts of precipitation are generally light associated with thunderstorm activity. However, our better chances of wetting rains will be in the northern part of the central Idaho mountains into Wyoming. As we move into Friday, we do have a weak trough of low pressure approaching the west coast, and we will continue to watch this for any potential thunderstorm activity along the Sierra front. However, right now, any activity looks like it'd be very isolated, if at all, but we will continue to monitor this, again, with any possible moisture creeping up into that area. The rest of the Great Basin will remain dry with decreasing winds. On Saturday, that low may drop south. Again, we could see some moisture, enough for some th thunderstorm activity in the northern part of the basin on Saturday, but right now it looks to be fairly isolated, with no high risk issued at this time. On Sunday, generally dry conditions return to most of the Great Basin. As we move into Monday, these conditions continue as well. We may see some moisture move into the northern part of the area starting on Monday for a return of some lightning activity, and we will continue to monitor this. No real changes in the overall precipitation for the next seven days, as most of what we'll see will happen over today and tomorrow in generally the central Idaho mountains. Our 8 to 14 day outlook, which takes us through the first week of July through July 10th, shows generally warm and dry conditions across the Great Basin, and this below normal potential for precipitation over Utah and the Arizona Strip is indicative of a delayed monsoon. Therefore, we will see below normal precipitation as we move into the early part of July, which is typically when the monsoon would have started. That concludes our briefing for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.